we're here today to look at a, a you might say a northern example of a chernozem soil. Uh, the soil we looked at earlier, the dark brown chernozem, was definitely in the um, just at the at the boundary of the uh, of the moist mixed grassland in the aspen parkland, and here we're in where the aspen parkland uh, basically uh, merges in with the continuous aspen forest to the north. And we've come about 75 kilometers north, and we've probably increased our elevation by about 100 meters. And so we're in a, a cooler uh, and more humid, a more moist environment. And because of that, we have a soil that uh, has somewhat deeper horizons. And, uh, and interestingly enough, is a soil that we call a dark gray chernozem. That means it's a, in a soil that occurs in this transitional area between the grasslands and, and, the, and the forest ecosystems. If we look a little more carefully at the soil, you'll see that we have, uh, from about 30 centimeters up, a, a very, quite a thick, I guess I should call it an AP horizon, because I'm going to mention later this very prominent and sharp boundary at the bottom part of the A horizon. So we have an AP horizon which is about 30 centimeters thick. That is actually a little thicker than we were expecting, and probably because on the upper part here there's evidently been the deposition of some wind blown dust from the cultivated fields in this area. But normally we would expect this A horizon to be about 15 or 20 centimeters thick, somewhat deeper than we had in the Orthic Dark Turnazem. Uh, as I mentioned, at the lower part of the A, there's quite a pronounced uh, line indicating that this soil was probably once plowed maybe many, many years ago, several decades ago probably, but hasn't been plowed, uh, it, it certainly hasn't been cultivated since that time. So we have an, uh, an AP horizon that goes from 0 to 30 centimeters. From about 30 centimeters down to about 45, you'll notice the, the brownish colored B horizon. I'm going to designate it as a BM horizon because I don't see any evidence other than the color, the, the brownish color, and to some degree the structure uh, that indicate that it, it, there's no indications that this is a BT horizon or a more strongly uh, developed kind of, of, of horizon that we'll be seeing later on in, in, in the gray Luvasol soil that we, we examine. So the B horizons from about uh, 30 to about 45, almost 50 centimeters in some places. The lower part of the B, you'll notice once again, there seems to be a, a little bit of a concentration of, um, of pebbles, but that's sort of what we expect when we're dealing with a a glacial till soil, that there will be that kind of a feature now and then. And then we move into the, down and into the, into the sea horizon, or the parent material, uh, and this is a glacial till. There's a boulder, a small boulder right there, and of course it is this material that's approximately uh, a clay loam texture. It's the, made up of a, a mixture, a approximately equal uh, mixture of sand, silt, and clay particles along with, the, along with the, uh, the stones and boulders that make it a glacial till. So this is, uh, if we do the soil colors, which are, once again, the great groups within the Chernozemic order, the decision about their classification is based on soil color. So if we take a sample of this A horizon, and I'm taking the sample here where I think it was the original A horizon, not material that might have been blown in, and if we use our soil color chart, it comes out to be, uh, um, even the moist color, about t uh, 10YR uh, 4.5 over 2, or 4 over 2, which means that it's a, a, dark gray, a dark gray chernozem soil. So the great group here is dark gray chernozem. Because we also have the B horizon, it's a typical or ordinary dark gray chernozem, so we would call this an orthic dark gray chernozem soil.